My title this morning is Fear of Letting Go, as you can kind of gather all the songs in and, and where we're at this morning. The fear of letting go, and why do we, why is it we don't want to let go? Why is it? And we all have a level of it. There's a number of reasons why we don't want to let go. We just don't. And we'll get into that a little bit more. Before I get started, I would ask Dean to come forward and he'll share together in Ephesians this morning. Ephesians 3, 16 through 20. I pray that out of his glorious riches, he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power together with all the Lord's holy people to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ. And to know this love that surpasses knowledge, that you may be feel, filled to the measure of all the fullness of of God. Now to him who is able to immeasurably to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine, according to his power that is at work within us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations, forever and ever. Amen. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Anybody been in a tug of war, you know, the rope and the knots, and it's a lot of fun, right? Then somebody wants to be funny and wants to let go and let you squirm. I'd be one of those people. I'd be on the end of the rope and, you know, we'd all be pulling and I'd let go and just watch everybody fall and have a good laughter out of it. We fear of letting go. We just fear it. There's a number of reasons. We, we struggle with our comfort zone. We have certain comforts even coming here to church. Having been in this other church for many years that we lived in, it was almost many, many years ago, you didn't sit in my pew. I sit there every week. That's not God's church. That's no resemblance of God's church. But we have, we're habitual. We create habits in our lives. And we don't want to change those habits because we're used to them. We're comfortable. We don't want to let go. But in fact, when we let go, we're letting God do what he does best. And that is to form us in the image of Jesus Christ. To bring wholeness to our lives. To make sure that whatever we do, that it is able to withstand the storms of life. How many have had a storm in their life? Raise your hand. Everybody has storms in their life. And if you haven't had one, bless you. Because one is waiting on your doorstep. Could be from a medical report, Anne's report that just came in. What a blessing. But we all are going to ashes to ashes, folks. That's reality. And the more that we want to let go and let God in, the more fullness of happiness. Get this. The more fullness of happiness we will have in each one of our lives. Amen? We will. It's just proven. We hear much about New Year's resolutions and our commitment to exercising. <laughs> We're going on a diet only to realize in a short time that we are weak and we fall back into our old habits, right? 
Having lived in the gym most of my adult life, I used to go to the gym faithfully three days a week and nothing ever got in the way of that. It was interesting to hear stories of a new face coming, coming for about five weeks only to never see them again. Right around the first of the year, we all make resolutions. We, I'll put myself in there too. We make resolutions, especially having been in the gym, people make resolutions and they're all gung-ho at the beginning. A new face would come and they're exercising. Well, about five weeks later, that face is no longer around. Hmm. I've come to the fact that we shouldn't focus on the silly resolutions as much as we should focus on removing some of the clutter in our lives. The New Year's resolution thing, I think it's a thing. It's like, come on. We know and we trust that all things are possible with Christ. We, we, we believe that. You've heard it more than once. But what clutter do you have in your life that you wish you didn't have? We all have it. We all have something. Some clutter. Something's in the way that it obstructs our ability to draw closer to God. And until we let go of that, we're going to stay right where we're at. And some people are okay with that. That's fine. But when we remove the clutter, the happiness and the joy, the fruits of the Spirit that invade our lives is evident by the fruit that we bear with one another. That brings us happiness. We're going to hear a lot more about letting go, but I have a funny this morning. It's called the Christmas flight. So if you don't think it's funny, just laugh anyways for me, will you? Okay? <laughs> it was a few days before Christmas. The, the trip went reasonably, reasonably well, and he was ready to go back home. The airport on the other end turned tacky red and green. The loudspeakers blared annoying elevator renditions of cherished Christmas carols. Being someone who took, took Christmas very seriously and being slightly tired, he was not in a particularly good mood, almost Scrooge, I might say, going to check in his luggage, which for some reason had become one suitcase with entirely new clothes. He saw hanging, he saw hanging a mistletoe. Not really a mistletoe, but a very happy plastic with red paint and some of the re rounder parts and green paint on some of the flatter and pointier parts Jeez. that could be taken for a mistletoe, only in a very Picasso sort of way. So this was an annoying mistletoe, all right? Should have just said that. With a considerable degree of irritation and nowhere else to vent, he said to the attendant, even if we were married, I would not want to kiss under that such a ghastly mocky of a mistletoe. Sir, look more closely where the mistletoe is. Okay, I see that it's above the luggage scale, which is a place you'd have to step forward for a kiss. That's not why it's there. Okay, I give up. Why is it over top of the luggage? It's there to kiss your luggage goodbye. <laughs> if you love that, give God a hand. I should have read it a little closer and omitted some of the middle part there. I guess they wanted you to see the picture of this ghastly thing hanging there. Oh, gosh. Kiss your luggage goodbye. You look like that. Paul's... Apostle Paul's purpose to the church of Ephesus was about strengthening believers in their Christian faith by explaining the nature and purpose of the church, the body of Christ. That was Paul's purpose. That was his primary purpose, to strengthen believers in their Christian faith by explaining the nature and purpose of the church, the body of Christ. In Ephesians 3, 17 through 20, he writes, as Dean has shared with us this morning, without faith, there is no love in our hearts. 
So, get that. If without faith, there is no love in our hearts. Do we believe in Jesus Christ? Say yes if you believe that. Yes. yes. Do we believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross and rose again? Yes. 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 I think we would all agree that being true. So if we have faith, then letting go shouldn't be an issue, right? You knew I was going to go there. <laughs> if we have faith, we really don't have anything to worry about, do we? But boy, we, we're good. We're good worried. And I read many months ago that I've introduced here as far as if we're really good at worry, and I think every one of us can raise our hand, and I'll raise mine, we can be good at meditating on Christ's word. Amen? Amen? We want to remove that worry in our heart and in our mind and in our soul. Find a scripture related to what we're troubled with. If we're troubled with a relationship, don't look up how I should eat today. Look up a scripture on how do I mend a broken heart? Look up a scripture on a, a problem that you're having at work with a non-believer. The Bible is our direction in life. The Bible is, is the offering, the offering of us to show and be the light of the world. You and I are to be the light of the world. We cannot be the light of the world if we don't have faith and we don't believe in Jesus Christ. I'm not talking a little bit. I'm talking about a whole bit. I'm talking about submitting ourselves to Christ so that we don't have this anxiety inside us. We're not troubled when a family member doesn't like us. Families are so broken. I have found out since I've been in, in the ministry, there isn't a family that's exempt from some sort of turmoil. It breaks my heart. It's, it's one thing I'm not fond of knowing that I've learned. Families are so broken. It's very troublesome for me. And Christ isn't part of their lives. And wow, boy, we have a job to do, don't we? Don't we have a job to do? And we can't think, you know, and I've said this to myself from time to time too. And, and I've said to God, actually, you know, I feel like I'm, I'm beating a dead horse here. I'm struggling. We have our church here and we have a lovely family of Christ. But there's the multitudes out there that need to hear about this. To he hear about this Jesus in our lives. And it's like throwing a tear into the ocean. Can we really make a difference? The answer is emphatically yes, we can. But we cannot make a difference if we're going to stay stuck where we're at and we're not going to grow in Christ. We're not going to relinquish the things that hold us back. The fears of letting go. It won't happen. It won't happen because fear takes, us, takes over us. And we struggle. An example might be a marriage going sideways. And we hang on because of why? Money? We hang on maybe because it's comfortable? Or a big one, it's embarrassing to go tell mom, mom, our relationship isn't working anymore. Or social status. I'm using this marriage as a metaphor to help us understand why we hang on sometimes. But by hanging on, we know that it can poison the children. I've seen marriages that I've been very close to with relations and friends that the kids are pawns. The kids are, are a tool to use against each other, which totally breaks my heart. Breaks my heart. And very close to a situation, I have offered my insight, 
and I wasn't asked, which is never good, because the kids are the, are the ones that, that feel the anguish and the pain of the separation or a divorce. And it poisons the kids if the kids are involved. It creates a wedge of evil that promotes getting even. A marriage doesn't go well, so all the two do that are separated or marriage, all they want to do is get back at each other. So when I see a marriage that has gone through a divorce and to see the adults acting like adults that care for the children, wow, what a wonderful thing it is. Because they set their own agenda aside and care more about the kids. Amen? They care more about the kids. Instead of getting back at the other one. It's a blessing. It really is. And it should be that way. Maybe if the adults didn't get along, you don't need to bring the kids into it all. So it promotes evil. I know this because I've seen this and there is no, none, zippo love that exists in a family. When the marriage is breaking up, or when a marriage happens, it's about love. When a divorce happens, it's about evil. And it's about getting even. Not in all cases. And I pray it isn't in all cases. Let's go. Let's go into this scenario. Could have been. Letting go of this scenario could have been the best thing for the children. And moving on with one's life as well. Wouldn't you agree? Anybody that's been involved in that? And I'm not speaking about your situation. Because I'm going to say the wrong thing. I'm talking about letting go. Talking about letting go. Wouldn't it be better to just, if the adults aren't working, you get a divorce, you have a companionship relationship for the children. Wouldn't that be healthier for the adults, the big people? And it would be so much happier for the little guys. Because why? Because they're going to try and live in harmony with one another. Key word. They don't always have to agree with one another to live in harmony with one another. As a matter of fact, society today is if you say something wrong, I'm offended by it. Or if I don't like what you say, I'm offended by it. But when a marriage goes sideways and they're all working in unity with one another to exercise the love of Jesus Christ in that environment, wow, that is so powerful and so meaningful. Well, it happens everywhere. No situation, no organization, no family environment is exempt from this environment. And letting go and letting God into those cavities. Wow. Do mm. you know why? Because we're letting God do what he can do. And that is to heal us. To strengthen us. To give us hope in the future. Can I get an amen? amen? God loves us. <laughs> I can tell you for me, my father was not a father. My father was a monster. But boy, I got a father that loves me, that embraces me, will never let me go. There's, I don't need my father from earth because I've got a father in heaven that loves me unconditionally. With my sins, with my brokenness, I am so grateful. Every day I, I thank God for that. Because he does show me the way. He doesn't leave me out in the pasture. He gives me the opportunity to see the way. Now let's look at verse 17 as it continues to say, And I pray that you being rooted and established in love. Do you think this family would have experienced the evil that took place if they were rooted and established in love? Probably not. Before the divorce came, if they were rooted and established in love, a divorce may not have even happened anyways. Because maybe, just maybe, God would have been part of that family's life. But if you're rooted and established in love, you're able to withstand the storms of life. You're able to withstand a divorce. You're able to withstand a relationship gone bad. A family member that is not fond of you. Pick one. They would not have they would not have experienced the enemy invading that family's life. And they would have lived, you've heard the phrase, happily ever after.
So how can we get to that place of being rooted and established in love? For me, I don't think it's, I don't think it's getting there. I think it's a journey. I don't think we arrive and we say, I'm rooted and established in love. It's a journey. It's an opportunity for us to grow in Christ. And we're not going to grow in Christ unless we're intentional about it. I'm not talking about the clothing ministry. I'm not talking about ringing the doorbell, ringing the doorbell, ringing the, the Salvation Army bell. I'm talking about your relationship on an individual basis, what God means to you. That's what I'm talking about. Nothing more, nothing less. If your soul is being filled on Sunday morning in worship, wonderful. If it stops there, not so wonderful. So much more needs to take place. Start something new in your life. Start something new in your life. My dear friend Debbie here, I'm gonna, I like putting people on the spot. She has, a, she has a ministry that she started. And it's a song ministry. She sends songs to people she knows. And I started doing that. Many of you receive a song from me. I've started doing that to inspire people. And I tell them, it's not necessarily, I don't need a response. And if you'd like not to receive this, I'm okay with that. I, I put that in an email occasionally. But it's a ministry to maybe lift somebody's day up. I don't know. That you've done for me. And I'm grateful for that. But start something yourself that can impact people. If you read the Bible, if there's a scripture that spoke to you, send that scripture to somebody. That's what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about our to-do list. I come from a very active to-do list in my life. And I wasn't happy until I completed the to-do list. Because that's who I am. I'm a mover and a shaker. Let's get it done. Let's get it done and everything. And it's like God says, wait a minute. Wait a minute. You say you love me and you want your prayers answered? How much time are you spending with me? Don't ask me for your prayers to be answered when you're not willing to give any of yourself or a small amount of yourself. God is a loving God. And he promises, as the scriptures remind us, that every prayer will be answered if offered with a good heart. Every prayer. Isn't that assurance? Wow. That's powerful. <clears throat> Removing some of the junks in our lives. What is holding you back as we enter the year 2024? I'm going to use the word that no one wants to hear. Here it comes. Change. Nobody wants to hear that word. If you make an apple pie with the same recipe that you love and others don't care for it, which they don't want to tell you that, maybe you, th maybe you think of how you can change the recipe, not for me, but for the others to delight in the gift of your baking. You got that? You're not making the pie so that you just love that apple pie, boy. A little ice cream on that? Sounds good, doesn't it? You're reconsidering how you make the apple pie so others take delight in it. That find joy in it. That's where we're bearing fruit, folks. And I'm not talking apples. That's where we're bearing fruit. They, won't, they will know us by our love, but more importantly, they will know us by our fruit. What is falling from you? What is falling from me? What do you need to change to experience the fullness of God's love? Maybe read the pastor's suggested books. I don't know if anybody's reading John. I don't need acknowledgement of that. I don't know how many people have read Luke in the month of December. Attend a Bible study, participate in church activities, say yes to church mission opportunities. There are many. Be so busy that God, 
Be so busy for God that you don't have time to swelts, you don't have time to spend on the junk in your lives, the clutter that we get consumed with. What bad, what bad habit can you empty out and let God in a little more, in a little more room to do great things in your life? You may have to slow down the merry-go-round. May have to slow down the merry-go-round to let a few people off. Are people in your circle of life, do they think the way you do? Do they believe the way you do? Are they encouragers? Or you leave after a conversation of being depressed? <clears throat> it's time to think about your relationships with others. You may have to let them off the merry-go-round. may have to let them off. Or the anxiety of being in control. There's another one. The anxiety of being in control. There is nothing positive about trying to be in control. Because we're just so, we're so consumed with wanting it my way. Do it my way. This is the best way to do it. Well, no. Somebody else may have a better idea. I was an excellent builder. Excellent builder, top notch. There was always somebody better. That's being hum admitting, humbly admitting that God is in control. Amen? God is in control. Taking responsibility for me. You have become what your mind tells you. Fill your vacant time doing things for God. We become what we think. That's just inherent of us. That's what we do. We would never think that we would ever become the President of the United States. I'm not sure. Maybe some of you had ambitions in your younger day. Well, today, who would want to? Let's, let's just throw that in. But we become what we think. If you want more for yourself, Think bigger. Think with God involved in the recipe of that. Mm. Verse 19, that you may be filled to the measure of fullness of God. This is where we're going. We're going to be filled with the fullness of God. Faith begins by letting go of the skeletons in our closet. There's one. There's my skeletons. Leave them alone. Don't touch them. And so many people live with those skeletons in their past. Maybe draw a picture of a skeleton and hang it outside your closet so everybody can see it. Silly, isn't it? We gotta let go, folks. We gotta be, we gotta let go. We gotta be okay that we're gonna let God take a hold of it. Skeletons in our closet, and boy, what do we do? God invades those spaces that brings joy, peace, hope, and his love in our heart. Wow. So joyous to trust him for these gifts. I searched for peace my whole life because I was a busy person. I searched for peace. Didn't always have peace. Still don't have 100% peace because like I said, it's a journey that we're all on. Some of us are further along in Christ. Others are still baby Christians. How do we how do we grow? Getting rid of the clutter, letting God into those cavities and into that space. Let God invade those spaces. He will bring you joy and peace that passes all understanding that we don't understand. But it's true. I'm a proven example of that. Let's start 2024 with excitement about how I can celebrate God in our lives. But also, how can I remove the clutter? He is willing to hold our hand. God is willing to embrace us like the prodigal son and the prodigal dad. He's willing to hold our hands and love all over you. Believe that, folks. Believe that God loves you so much. He wants to embrace you. What do I say? 
Together as a body of Christ, we can do more than what we believe we can do. Letting go and letting God brings victory. Say victory. Victory. In Jesus Christ. Do you want victory? Do you want victory? I pray it be so. In Jesus' name, amen.